I, I think you, you like any event that you go to, but, but especially for me, the main event, um, because again, it, it's run by people that already run successful schools. So there's a lot of events going on in our industry, and I like to go everywhere because that's where you learn. But specifically, if you run a martial arts school, an event run by somebody that runs multiple martial arts schools is, for me, a, a good thing already. Hi, this is George Free, and welcome to another Martial Arts Media Business Podcast. Today, I am with Chris Knott, all the way from Mar Margate, Florida. How are you doing today, Chris? I'm doing great, George. Good morning, buddy. Awesome. And from FKA Martial Arts, and we're going to have a bit of a chat. We also are going to be meeting Chris officially at the main event in San Diego. So depending when you're listening to this podcast episode that is between the 26th and the 28th of April so that's going to be a lot of fun if you're a business uh, martial arts school owner or instructor and you want to learn a bit more um, it's going to be a great event to attend to and we'll probably speak a little bit about that but first I guess we've got to start right from the beginning who is Chris Knott? Um, well hi <laughs> so, um, like the rest of you guys, uh, martial arts is my passion, always has been. And, uh, you know, when I came to the U.S., uh, I turned what was, uh, I guess, a hobby in, in the U.K., because I think back in the day, that's more how martial arts was perceived, uh, at least in England. Um, but it's obviously changed now. Um, but in America, it was it was already run as a structured professional business. It was a way to... You know, I, I guess do something that you love, but also, you know, make a living at that and, and support your family at the same time. So um, I'm very fortunate to do what I do for a living. So uh, my passion is, is teaching uh, anybody, kids, adults, doesn't matter. But I, I would say mainly, you know, I, I really enjoy teaching children. Okay, so how did, how did this journey all begin? So you immigrated from the UK, came into the United States. Where, where did it all sort of originate? Um, yeah, so that's a great question. Um, as a kid, I, I dabbled in martial arts uh, at different clubs or youth clubs, I guess, in England. Um, played a lot of other sports as well. You know, football, well, what we know as soccer. Um, but, you know, martial <laughs> arts was, was always a passion. I think, I guess, like everybody around my age, when you once saw a Bruce Lee movie, you were like, that's it, I want to be Bruce Lee. So that's, I guess, kind of what drew me to martial arts. Um, Came to the States in 87, uh, trained in a, a couple of different styles and systems and kind of settled on uh, a school up here and uh, managed to find an instructor for Jeet Kune Do, which again was my passion. And that's where I started um, looking at the opportunity to, I guess, get involved in martial arts more as a career than something as a hobby. Um, at the time, actually my background, uh, I was a French polisher went to London College of Furniture. So when I first came to the States, that's what I was doing for a living. Um, actually worked down here on the yachts and bolts, refurbishing, doing that kind of thing. Um, eventually, when I got married and had kids, I kind of looked at that career path and said, you know, do I want to be around all those chemicals and dust and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. Looking at my young kids, and I kind of want to grow up in a healthier lifestyle. And I got the opportunity through my training to, you know, go on to become an instructor and then just decided to make a complete career change. I was, I was probably, I came to this a lot later than most people. I was probably 29, 30 when I started. I mean, most people have been doing this since they were children, at least involved in schools or livings in the, in the U.S. Um, and I started my school, oh, I, I stayed with that instructor for a while teaching, and eventually, I guess like we all do, you have a, a sort of yearning to jump out there on your own and give it a shot, you know. I actually opened my school 10 or 12 years ago in a community center locally here in the city of Margate. Started with two students, and uh, over the course of three or four years, we grew that to about 100, 150 students in the school. And I'm like, hey, man, could actually make a living doing this thing, you know? <laughs> so we um, did a couple of Hail Marys, and uh, we invested in the, the facility and the school. Be careful what you ask for, because the first few years were uh, a little hairier than I thought it was going to be. Um, but, you know, with perseverance and time and studying and learning from people in our industry that have been there before us, um, we've, I think, now got a, a really solid school, a good system. We, we have a good business. My wife now works at the school, um, a few full-time employees. We run an after-school, a summer camp program, a pretty strong kids' martial art program, and a, a good adult class at night. I guess that was the 100-mile-an-hour overview of from how did I get involved <laughs> to where I am now. You know? 
That's cool. So, uh, what what were those early obstacles? Because I mean, you you say you started late. I mean, I'm a complete late comer. Uh, 36. I only started training martial arts because my son was training. So I thought it was a cool dad son thing to get going. So that that got me into you know super late as uh, what I think is super late. Although it's you know now my full time passion. But what's What's what sort of you know if you look at those early stages, what were the biggest obstacles you faced to really make that switch from taking your career into making that shift into full time martial arts school? Well, I think always when you you give up one career, I mean the career I was actually in was a, a career that generated very good revenue. So uh, I mean, I don't want to be cliche, but yes, by giving up that kind of revenue that I was making to go into a business that I didn't have that at the time. I was lucky enough to have a wife that was super supportive. You know, she had a good job. So that definitely, uh, I guess, was like a good insurance policy on umbrella for us while we made that transition. But yeah, you know, man, they were like everybody. When you start out, you struggle. There's some hairy months. You're like, oh my God, are we even going to be able to pay the bills? And You know, so we, we went through all of that stress, um, you know. But again, I think if you are able to do something in your life where you can line up your passion and also turn that into something that generates a revenue, come on, man, that's the greatest thing, right? I mean, you get to wake <laughs> up and do what you love. So, you know, yes. I, I, again, not to sound cliche, but I guess the finances in the beginning were the obstacle and, and realizing maybe I didn't have all the tools to, to execute and, and, you know, do what it is I need to do to grow the school. And I think a lot of that comes down to, if you probably if you start martial arts at a young age and you're you're in a school i don't know i use fred as an example but if you're in a school like that where they're already successful they have systems in place the kids are going to come up through that structure and system and so they've already got all the tools to succeed you know what i'm saying versus like you talk about you and i coming to the industry later yeah super passionate about martial arts i've been very lucky to have some awesome martial arts instructors but maybe not the best business coaches in the world. So it's like, here you are, like, man, I got this great martial art skill program I want to teach, and yeah, how do I get them students? What's that all about? <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm sure people can relate to that. that that's, a, that's an interesting topic because it's, it's something that's been coming up a lot. Actually, I was writing an email about this about an hour ago about um, ad, advice within the industry. Um, I think there's this... I guess and you see this in business and then you see this in martial arts. People get this superhero syndrome thing that mm. because you're successful in one thing, you, 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 you assume that that advice applies to everything else. And I think because especially in martial arts where people reach such a high stage in martial arts that they openly share business knowledge and things that they might not be that on top of. And people buy into that, they go the wrong way, get the wrong advice, and there's a lot of repercussions, of course. Yeah, sure. Yeah. How, how, did, how did you sort of get to, you know, finding the right people to listen to and the right business advice to, to move you forward? Um, well, first of all, by making lots of mistakes, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> I'd have to say, you know, um, we, we learn, I think, more often a lot more from our mistakes than we do from the things that we do, right? you know um and then just sort of coming to a point where you know you're like all right well i just i don't know how to do this or i don't know how to do that i better study right education is how we improve anything we do if you don't know how to do something you know you need to read or study i guess in this day and age google it and watch it on youtube but even then i don't think that's the it's a it's a good start you know but yeah. i think at the end of the day is whatever kind of coaching you're going to get my advice will be just simply this take a good look at the people you're about to go mentor and study under and look at what they've done. Now, if they've been successful with that particular thing, there's a pretty good chance as long as you pay attention and listen to them and do what it is they ask you to do, you're going to have that same success because it's proven. Does that make sense? Yeah. Versus, hey, uh, my friend told me this chap over there is doing this. Let's try this. And now you're kind of just listening in the wind and you really don't know what kind of results you're going to get. You know? <laughs> All right, so, awesome. Cool. So, so now, what's what sort of developed as your strength in the martial arts space? Um, let's see. That's a that's a good question. I mean, I'm super passionate about teaching. I love to teach. Um, you know, if you're going to be 
<laughs> if you're going to be doing your job, you better love what you do. You know, so I, I love to uh, be on the mat, impart knowledge, see people learn and grow and be a part of people's lives. I, I like to think I'm a pretty good people person. I wouldn't say accounting and bookkeeping is my strong suit. God bless my wife for taking care of that side of our business. You know, um, I, I enjoy, I guess, building our business, you know, like day by day, looking at what can we do next. I love the the challenge of what are we going to do for our marketing this month? How are we going to grow the business? How can we impact more lives in our community by getting more students into the school? Um, so I, I would say those those are my strengths. Okay, cool. So, and I'm going to change gears a, uh, just to a question I picked up uh, looking at your website, FK, mm -hmm. fkamartialarts.com. Yeah. Um, but before we get to that, I think we just, I, I just want to, I don't want to, I don't want to lose track from where actually, we are. Actually, the site is uh, familyknowledgeaction.com. Family Knowledge Action. Dot com. FKA, is, that's what it stands for, is Family Knowledge Action. So when we chose our school name, you know, our, our philosophy is basically embracing families in our community and imparting knowledge through an action philosophy. And that's what became the name of our school. Okay, so, so there's, because there's two, there's two, there's FKAMartialArts.com. Yeah, we actually, for marketing, we have like a ton of different websites. Right, like okay. School and websites, but if you really want to kind of get a feel for who we are as a, a school family knowledge action will give you a good overview of all the different products. I don't say that as a plug. I know you can edit that out just so that you have the right address if people are looking at it. You know? No, that's okay. That's 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 good because that's that's the website I was looking at. I, I did because um, you know because we we develop websites for martial arts schools, so it's yeah. always obviously it's one thing I always look at and I always look at just what people are doing and um, yeah. In internal critique is, is that good we, would we do better <laughs> but uh, yeah, oh yeah for sure all the time um but just uh, i i found it very uh i found it very cool and i don't want to get into a big technology talk but i found it very good the way you um the the style that you had on fka martial arts just with um using the sort of wordpress blog type template um, yeah. But really good, strong headline. Really talking to your audience, parents and kids. Um, really good keyword structure and so forth. Is that is that something that you pay a lot of attention to with with your with your school marketing? Well, I really can't take credit for that. The websites. Um, I'm involved in you know many different groups in our industry. Um, I consult for my, you know again. I I basically like to think that we have two companies running out of one location. We run a martial arts program for children and adults, and as I mentioned earlier, we also have an after school and a summer camp program. Well, I think the confusion for a lot of people is they try to run them like they're the same business. They're really not. They're two separate companies. I have two separate staff teams, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and therefore you need two separate kind of marketing strategies for those programs so I'm not trying to plug here but I, I do mentor with a an after school and summer camp uh, program called MAST and uh, actually Dwayne Dwayne Spires is the chap that runs that and he's the one that I have to credit for the websites and I can tell you that for us they work we generate a lot of these so they may not look like the fanciest website on the planet you know I mean I know there's a lot of uh, other sites out there with many more bells and whistles but sometimes I think less is more, right? Simplistic. As you've just mentioned, big, bold headlines hit you in the face. looks more like a newspaper with some cheesy pictures on it yeah. and gets the job done. So at the end of the day, our websites are, you know, I think we used to think that they were like, oh, we got to show who we are and all of our cool stuff and look at all our cool <laughs> Nobody cares. They just want to know who are you, what are you going to do the, exactly? What all the bling at the back. <laughs> Yeah, but what, people, but what do people really care about? They're, what's in it for them? What are you doing for them? What services can you yeah. offer them? They don't care about your history and your, you know, I was born on the top of a mountain and you know, whatever that nonsense is. So um, anyhow, so the, the sites work well for yeah. us. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's something we always talk about because we're always talking about conversions and websites. And um, I, I just noticed it, it really ticked the boxes, which was, which was really good and just the, the simplicity of it. Um, which I think vouches for just, yeah. um, I think people get way too carried away with technology and, and that's really web developers fault because most web developers don't understand marketing and strategy. So they come sure. to the party with the design aspect. How can we make this look flashy? And it yeah. actually just distracts from the user experience, which means no leads, people leave, 
get frustrated. They're not getting the actual message to fulfill their what? need, what they're actually looking for. Yeah, I think, uh, George, I 100% agree with you, mate. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, we look at our scores and we have these opportunities, what we call, you know, our pillars of marketing. What do you have that's going to help you grow your score? Well, that's what your website, in my opinion, for whatever it's worth, should be, is something that's going to help generate or explain who you are with a good sort of lead capture to get people interested and as you said a good hook to to get people to jump on and say hey let me check this place out man you know um, for what it's worth that's what i think but you know what do i know i'm no expert with websites and all that kind of stuff. that's awesome <laughs> cool so so getting back to um i guess the main event and um hmm. so you're going to be you're going to be speaking about a few things what if if people had to come down to San Diego, which I think I'm, tra- I'm traveling 25 hours to get there. So I think anybody yeah. in America could definitely make the trip. <laughs> but what would you be... <laughs> Sorry to cut you off there. But what, would you, uh, what are you going to be speaking about? What can people expect from, from your perspective? Well, actually, I'm not speaking. I mean, I will speak, but I'm teaching. So I'm not speaking so much as standing up there to give a dissertation or a speech about any particular topic. Um, I wouldn't say speaking is my strong suit. Uh, you know, um, I, again, I love to teach, and I've been lucky enough to teach at the main event for the last three or four years. And again, I just enjoy it. So I'm going to teach a seminar. I, I know Fred said last year it might be an hour or two hours. I'm not quite sure how long it's going to be, but I'm going to do my best in the time that I teach to just share some of the the cool weapons based drills that we do at our school. You know, give a value to some of the instructors that come train and. If they have a good time, that's awesome. And also that they can take some of that information back and apply it to their schools. So whether they, I don't know, use it to help for a weapons class, maybe a seminar, can use it in a birthday party, buddy days, add it into a little bit of the self-defense classes for their adults. I'm going to try and you know quickly touch on a lot of different topics and um, just give some value, I guess. That will be the goal. Make sure everybody has a good time, work out, and learn something. Awesome. So for, for you, as you have, um, you know, you've been, you mentioned you've been to the main event the last, the last four times. What do, you, what do you feel as a school owner, what do you feel a school owner and an instructor would get out of going to an event like the main event? Um, I, I think you, you, like any event that you go to, but, but especially for me, the main event, um, because again, it, it's run by people that already run successful schools. So there's a lot of events going on in our industry, and I like to go everywhere because that's where you learn. But specifically, if you run a martial arts school, an event run by somebody that runs multiple martial arts schools is, for me, a good thing already because you know the content you're going to get is going to be super relevant to what you do on a day-to-day basis, I guess, in your own school. So whether you're looking to learn more about the business side of your school, learn a little bit more about the marketing side of your school, get some great tips on how to teach better classes, student retention. Um, I've found that all of that is packed into the event. And again, it's being given to you by people that have already done this over time. So that that to me, again, is if you're going to learn, go study from people that already do it and have been successful with it. I would say. Good point. <laughs> All right, awesome. Hey, Chris, it's been great speaking to you. Is there anything I should have asked you that I haven't asked you? It's the cliche uh, question, but I'm asking it. <laughs> uh, would you like a pint, mate? <laughs> well, it's... You didn't ask. Ozzy, that's th- just so rude. Th- that's, that's, it's it's 2211. I could probably pass. If if you said yes, I would have some concerns. <laughs> yeah, I'm drinking my dunk. Oh, that's coffee, mate. It's too early for that. But maybe, maybe when I see you in San Diego, definitely we'll, we'll grab a beer together and chat. That would be awesome. That will be fantastic. All right, awesome. Chris, great speaking to you. And if anybody wants to find more details about you, you mentioned the website that you corrected me on. Uh, it's familyknowledgeaction.com. That's our school website. Um, if not, people can message me on Facebook or whatever. Um, pretty accessible. Most of the time. So, there you go. All right, awesome. Good stuff, Chris. Look forward to seeing you in San Diego. And All right. speak soon. All right, brother. Thanks, mate. Have a good one. We'll talk soon, okay? Cheers. See ya.